everybody welcome back to fish the mark appreciate you joining in and uh, watching the channel please hit the subscribe button that uh, helps the channel out tremendously if you hit the subscribe button so please do that also uh, put in comments in you have about the channel and what you'd like to see us uh, do differently other ways you'd like to see us fish those kind of things this episode is about fishing uh, banner marsh uh, went to shovel lake which is at the bell's landing exit off the road um, um, about the middle of August of 2022. And uh, I didn't have a long time to fish this particular day. I only had about three and a half hours of fishing time available to me, but was able to uh, fish a specific area and kind of dissect it, uh, learned a little bit about that area and caught uh, you know a decent amount of fish for only three and a half hours of fishing. So um, I think uh, it's uh, got some good lessons in it for everybody. And so I think uh, I'll, I'll go through and show what, uh, what we learned um, let me go ahead and uh, talk a little bit here about Banner Marsh uh, Bell's Landing and, uh, and what that is. Um, so if you take a look at, first of all, where is Banner Marsh? It is south of Peoria. So this is Peoria up here. This is speaking here. Um, Banner Marsh is south on 24 uh, out of Peoria. And then there's there's three primary exits to the lakes. There's East Access, Main Access, and Bell's Landing. Um, where I went to for this particular trip is I took the Bell's Landing exit off of 24 and then uh, came over here and fished Shovel Lake. And so this is Shovel Lake. Um, so when you take uh, the exit off the highway, you come down this road here, it comes to um, a four-way intersection. You take a right on that intersection. And it takes you right over here to the um, to the boat ramp, and it's got a nice cement boat ramp. Word of caution: that entire road right there is gravel, and your boat and your truck and everything. I mean, it's probably a good mile and a half, I would say, of travel on that gravel road. And your truck and boat, and if you have anything out in your boat, it just gets filthy. So you need to know that before you go there. Um, you're gonna get some rocks thrown up on your boat and stuff. Um, and then for this specific trip, like I said, I only had about three and a half hours of fishing time. So when you first put in here, there's a little bridge that allows you to get from here to here. I fished this area for three and a half hours. And I, I tell you, I've never done that before on this lake. I've gone in here. I fished for a little bit. If I caught something, I would keep fishing. But usually I only fished uh, it for a short period of time. And I decided to kind of dissect this thing over three and a half hours. And so this is a, a deep mining canal. Uh, the deepest spot right down the middle is in the 30 feet range, a lot of places. Um, there's a few undulations in it. You come back here towards the back, there's some longer flats that come out into the middle of the, of the canal. But it is uh, very steep drops at the shoreline. And uh, the first from, you know, from this area here is uh, a lot of down trees to fish. So you got a lot of down trees and a lot of grass to fish here. Then it kind of, you don't have as hardly any down trees nor any grass right through here, but there's a couple of shelves there that you can fish. And then all back here has a lot of grass on it. And so um, this is going to be the area that I focus on during the day fishing. Um, let's take a look at um, what the DNR says about uh, Shovel Lake. Uh, they say it's about 200 acres. Uh, as you can see right here is um, where I put in at. Here's that little bridge that you go through to fish the area I fished in. You can come down this way. This is a, another long canal. Lots of good fishing in this long canal. Uh, the lake, that's kind of really more of a lake-like area here. And then you can come back into here and work your way around to a, a variety of different places. Um, if you've got a boat that can run shallow, this is really marshy, really shallow in different areas. You got to be careful with your lower unit, but you can get around and fish a lot of this area too. I did not do any of this on this particular day, like I said, I focused on this area here is where I specifically focused on. So um, if we take a look at uh, some more information here about Banner, uh, Bell, uh, Shovel Lake, uh, it's 25 horsepower limit. You can put an over 25 on and idle only at all the Banner Marsh Lakes now. 
So 25 horsepower, you can go as fast as the boat goes. But if you have over 25 horsepower, you can still put it on, but idle only. Again, just be cautious that you're going to have a mile and a half of gravel roads. It's going to get your boat uh, filthy. The only real stocking that they're showing in the lake here recently is some musky that they put in. And I tell you, every, I didn't see any on this trip, but on, on Shovel Lake here, I see some absolute monster musky sometimes when I'm out there. And, uh, you know, they've got, uh, they report it as good fishing for bass. I actually think uh, Bell's Landing is, is very good fishing for bass. And so I, I recommend it for that. There's a lot of crappie fishermen out there. I see a lot of guys crappie fishing at Bell's Landing. And like I said, I see some monster musky when I'm out there fishing. So uh, when they were creating this uh, site, they kind of uh, got a little carried away with their copy paste feature. So they put a lot of the same stuff over and over and over in their site here. Uh, it, what's important to remember when you're bass fishing banner is that it's a slot limit. And so for bass, it's got to be over 18 inches, or I believe, uh, yeah, here we go, over 18 inches or less than 12 inches uh, for you to be able to keep it. And so, and you can only, uh, it's three fish per person is all you can keep. And so, um, you know, they've got a pretty restrictive limit, uh, slot limit on the lake uh, for bass. I will put a link to this uh, site in here and in in down in the documents below. So you guys can all go through and uh, take a look at all the registrations and or all the requirements for the lake, all the rules, those kind of things. Um, the other thing that's nice about this DNR site is it does show the bass tournaments or any tournaments, not just bass, but the tournaments that are scheduled for the remainder of the year. There's only two left on this particular one the rest of the year. Um, but and it also shows you some data for bass tournaments here. So that's always interesting to take a look at as well, especially when you're in the spring. If you're going to run to Banner Marsh, you can take a look at um, all three main lakes and see which one doesn't have a tournament on. So you can go to a lake that doesn't have a tournament if you'd prefer to avoid the extra traffic. So um, here's that satellite view of the lake. And again, I think it's interesting to take a look at these satellite views. Again, this entire video is going to be fishing up here in this section. But as I said earlier, this canal has some really good fishing in it. Um, this area here has a lot of different uh, structure to be able to fish. And then you can get through here and fish these areas back in here. And you can even work your way all the way back here. But this has got air areas are extremely shallow and hazardous to maneuver your boat through. So just be careful if you go back there. Um, this is the area that I fished uh, specifically. And what I've done is I've highlighted the areas that I caught fish at. I caught uh, several right in through here. I caught one here, and then I caught several up here. Again, I only fished three and a half hours. I went around about that kind of circle there twice, and then went all the way around the lake once in my three hours, three and a half hours of fishing here. Um, so let's take a look at the fish catches and how we did. And, um, and then we'll come back and talk about um, the specific lures I caught them on. All right, uh, as we're getting ready to get out on the water, uh, the first fish catch of the day uh, is going to come from right here. So, I, you know, I put in here, uh, I actually fished this little wall right here, came through uh, underneath the bridge, which was really shallow. Uh, good thing I've got a, a boat that goes through skinny water well. And then I started fishing around here. Uh, started throwing a frog at first. Um, there was uh, way less grass than I anticipated, way less surface grass and, and moss to throw the frog on than I expected. So when it thinned out a little bit, I picked up um, the Angler Assets uh, spinnerbait and started throwing it. And um, this is the first catch off of that for the day. Let me turn this down a little bit. Um, and... Uh, so you can see how thin the grass was here. So I started throwing that spinnerbait parallel with the shore and just on the outer edge of the uh, of the grass line, trying to bring it through there and uh, picked up this nice uh, 16 and a half incher on the spinnerbait. Was uh, was pretty happy with that to get the day kind of kick started and going. Then you can see so that first fish I caught. 
was uh, was over here on this side uh, after the grass had thinned out. I came around and was fishing again, the, not near as much grass as I've seen in the past in through here. A lot of times the surface grass comes all the way out to here. So I'm throwing parallel to the surface grass, bringing that spinner bait through there. And uh, I get hooked up again and uh, not near as nice a fish, but you know, we'll take a 12 inch fish whenever we get a fish. So pretty happy with that to get started. Now I've, I've gone back to that bridge and I started coming around again. Instead of throwing the frog this time, I'm punching the grass. And this is really this area here. So let me show you on the map again where, I, where I'm at here. Um, I am, I'm right back in through here again. And uh, the grass from here to here was, was kind of far enough out that you could throw a frog. Otherwise, it was just really not much grass anywhere up through here. And so I was punching instead of throwing the frog this time because I, I, I got one little blow up on the frog the first time through. So this time I'm punching the grass um, with a rocket craw. And so you'll see me go through here punching this grass. And, uh, and that's where uh, what I'm doing when I catch this one here. So I punch out right into, right into there. And take off running with it. And this is my big fish of the day here. It's a little over 18 inches, so it's an overkeeper on the lake. As usual, with punch and you bring it back with a head full of grass. Uh, and, uh, you know, a nice three pound bass, probably, maybe three and a quarter. Uh, but you'll, I'll take that. And then that was really the only bass I got punched in this particular day. So um, I, I moved up here, punching the skinny grass for a while, didn't get anything. Um, there was some really interesting looking down trees and uh, the graph was showing some flat areas up here. So I decided to um, come over and throw a jig across there. So this is maybe my third cast with the jig here. Set the hook on this fish. Uh, not a big fish, maybe 14 inches. Uh, but let's uh, do those fish over here. So this is just a few minutes later. Uh, I get hung up in some grass. I pop it out of the grass. And shortly after popping it out of the grass, I get one. Turns out this one's even smaller than the last one. It ends up being like about 10 inches. And he fell off and he's fine because it's been 10 inch fish. So. Now, before I get into this fish, let me back it up a little bit here. Um, I did go up from here and I fished my way around all of this. Combination of frog fishing, punching, and throwing the spinner bait on the outer edge of the grass. And I didn't get a hit, didn't get a blow up, didn't get, didn't even see a fish up there. <laughs> so after 45 minutes of doing that, I'm like, okay, that's enough of that. So I came down and uh, hit this same area again. And, um, and that's where uh, this fish gets caught. Uh, I want one thing I want to show on this one, watch where the lure lands. It lands up here pretty close to shore. So even though I'm fishing the drop off, it's such a steep drop off through here. I mean, the water, when you land next to shore, you're in about two feet of water. By the time you're six, eight feet off of shore, you're in 10, 12 feet of water. It's a very steep drop off of there. So I cast out there, see it land right there, let it sink down to the bottom. I move it a couple times, trying to get it down. fish once again close to probably three pounds maybe not quite three pounds but in that same class so in three hours of fishing I caught um, you know a 16 and a half 
the 17 and three quarters and an 18 and a quarter. Um, and then I caught several shorts, um, you know, that were in the 12 to 14 inch range. There was a couple that I didn't have the camera set up for that I, that I didn't get on camera that were only 10, 12 inches as well. So I was pretty happy with uh, that day. And it gave me, like I said, a really good chance to, to kind of get to know this canal so that I can continue to fish it and get better at it. And this area here is really good for frogging. It's good for punching. Uh, there's some down trees that you can flip in through here. And then as it gets skinnier up here, that's where I caught them on uh, that spinner bait. I tried to buzz bait for a little bit, didn't get anything to come up on the buzz bait, but I could catch them on the spinner bait through here. Uh, this area over here is very similar to this area. You've got a lot of grass and um, down trees to fish. As you work your way up, this gets shallower next to shore in through here and uh, doesn't have very many down trees. And surprisingly, even though it's shallower, it doesn't have a lot of grass there either. Um, and so uh, you can uh, cast up there. You can bring a Texas rig lure through that pretty well. You could throw a spinner bait up there. You could throw, um, you know, like a soft swim bait, something like that in through there. Um, over here is where I found, you know, I found a shelf right in this area here that I could fish the drop off. Oops. I did that a few times and, uh, and caught fish off the drop off right here. But most of what I caught on that jig was, um, was coming through here, casting up into the shade, working the jig out of the shade and getting it down to about eight feet of water. And I would get a hit about eight feet of water. All right, so here are the three lures that I caught fish on uh, during the course of the day out there. One of them was the rocket crawl. You guys have seen me fish this before. The big difference here is instead of this quarter ounce weight, um, I had a three quarter ounce uh, jig uh, punching weight put on, so much bigger weight. Had it pegged down on there so it wouldn't slide off and it would pull the, the rocket crawl through the the grass. Uh, and so that first one that I caught, that 18 incher, um, was caught on, uh, on that. Um, the, the ones that I caught, um, kind of when the boat was out deeper and I was jig fishing was with my Strike King jig with the Rage Claw trailer. And you've seen that used quite a bit recently as well. And then the two that I caught on the spinner bait, I caught, uh, on an angler assets, a uh, white spinner bait with a little blue here, uh, and it makes it look like a, a shad or a blue herring going through the water like that. And so that's what I caught um, the two on that were on spinner baits out there. So um, really appreciate everybody coming in and joining the channel. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments about fishing uh, Shovel Lake, uh, really love to hear those. Again, if you like what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button. Um, and um, if you've got any places you'd like to see us go fish and do a fishing report on, just let me know and we'll try to work it into the schedule. Thank you.